Okay, a little bit about drama and Oedipus the King. You have to understand the background of this uh, play uh, in order to understand the play. The background of the play is about a man who kills his father and marries his mother. That's the background of the play. It's not the play. The play has to do with solving a mystery, the mystery of who killed King Laos, who was the father of Oedipus. So let's begin a little bit at the beginning. Here we have a marriage between Jocasta and Laos. Laos is the king of Thebes. He marries Jocasta, and then he finds out from the Oracle of Delphi, and we'll get back to Oracle of Delphi in a little bit, which tells him that if he has a son, his son is going to grow up uh, to be the cause of his death. In other words, the son is going to kill him. So he decides not to have any children, which means that he decides not to have sex with his wife. His wife, who's a young woman, um, and is not, not interested in having a marriage with somebody who's not going to sleep with her, uh, decides that she's got, uh, she's got to do something about it. So she gets Laos drunk one night and kind of drags him into bed, and they consummate the marriage in this way. She gets pregnant, and after a while she thinks she better confess to her husband what happened because she's beginning to show. Uh, her husband says, okay, all right, uh, I understand this could happen, but uh, let's see. When you get the child, what we'll have to do is uh, take care of the matter, which meant in ancient Greek terms, or uh, times rather, to take the child and put him on the mountainside in order to die of exposure or to die, you know, being devoured by some wild animal. In this way, we, they could tell themselves that a god had taken their child. Right? So this is what happens. Um, Jocasta delivers, they take the child, and uh, they give it to uh, a shepherd uh, in their household. And the shepherd is supposed to go and take it to, to be exposed on the mountainside, but the shepherd can't do it. He's a decent human being. He doesn't want to see the child die. And so he uh, relieves himself of the responsibility by giving the child to another shepherd. This shepherd now uh, works for the uh, king and queen of Corinth, which is a city a little bit uh, on the uh, on the isthmus of Corinth, a little bit south of Thebes. He goes back and he gives them the child. He gives the king and queen of Corinth the child. They adopt a little baby Oedipus uh, because they don't have any children of their own. Oedipus grows up in the household believing he's the prince of Corinth. He's at a wedding one, one day and uh, while he's standing around looking for something uh, to do, uh, some drunk sidles up to him and says to him, <laughs> you think uh, those are your parents? And then the drunk kind of disappears. Oedipus gets very upset about this. And he decides that he's got to settle the matter. So off he goes to the Oracle of Delphi. Now the Oracle of Delphi is a place where the god Apollo reveals the truth about things, also predicts the future. Apollo is the god of the sun, He's the god of city culture. He's the god of poetry. He's also the god of um, diseases. He, he wants to make sure the city itself uh, is wholesome. And uh, sometimes he can bring a disease upon a city if the city is not wholesome, which means that if the city is somehow harboring a criminal. And this is what's going to happen a little later on. Meanwhile, Oedipus goes to the oracle of Delphi. Delphi is in one of the mountain ranges of of Greece, and ask the question, who are my parents? Now, the oracle always comes back with something mystifying or something disturbing uh, and never answers the question directly. So this time, the oracle tells Oedipus, you're going to kill your father and marry your mother. Oedipus gets very upset about this and decides he's not going to go back to Corinth. And he goes to a place where the road divides, uh, one turn is going to take him to Thebes rather than uh, Corinth. And so he decides he's going to go up that way. But just as he's about at this crossroads where three roads meet, they really do meet in Greece. They still are there in Greece. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go there, but there's no sign there. It doesn't say here's where Oedipus killed his father. No, it's a rather uh, desolate spot. Uh, but there it was back in the ancient times. And uh, King Laos now is coming out of Thebes, uh, some kind of a destination, and he, he runs into Oedipus, who's maybe taken up uh, the wrong part of the road. He says, 
tells the kid, get out of the way, get out of the way. Uh, but Oedipus, who is a proud fellow, whips out his sword and starts fighting with the king and his six retainers. He kills five of them and the king. One of the retainers gets away, as you'll find out when you read the play, what happens to him. Oedipus then proceeds to the gates of Thebes, where he meets the Sphinx. Now, this is the Greek Sphinx, not the Egyptian Sphinx. It has the head of, head of a woman, it has the wings of an eagle, and it has the hindquarters of a lion. It's really, according to the Greeks, pretty ferocious. And the uh, oracle of, uh, or rather, not the oracle, the riddle of the Sphinx is such that um, everyone who comes to the gate of Thebes has to somehow give her an answer. She's been plaguing the citizens of Thebes of Thebes, stealing their babies, eating them, doing all sorts of nasty things, and not letting anybody in the city and not letting anybody close to her uh, so that they might be able to handle the situation. And anyone who came to the gates of the city was asked this question. Now, if they didn't get the answer right, they'd be devoured. So uh, nobody's been successful to this point. The question is this, what walks on four legs in the morning, on two legs in the afternoon, and on three legs in the evening. Well, Oedipus has the answer. He's a smart fellow. And of course, we know the answer now, thanks to this play. The answer is man. Man crawls uh, when he's a child. He walks upright in the afternoon of his life. And then in the evening of, the, of his life, he needs a cane in order to get, to get on. He answers the question correctly. The Sphinx is so upset about this that she just shrivels up and dies. Uh, like the Wicked Witch of the West when Dorothy throws water on her. And Oedipus now enters the city. He saved the city from this uh, really horrible creature. And um, he's celebrated. And at the same time, uh, the city, which, uh, which has lost its king and has a queen who's unmarried, uh, and offer, makes an offer to Oedipus saying, look, why don't you... Why don't you marry the queen, who was probably fairly young, a fairly young woman when she had him. Of course, it's his mother, uh, uh, but he doesn't know this. And uh, they say, you know, you can be the king. So they get married. And then they have four kids and everybody's happy until a plague breaks out. Now, this is where the play begins. The play is not about a man who uh, kills his father and marries his mother. That's background. The play is about this. The problem is a, is a plague. What do you do when there's a plague? You go off to the Oracle of Delphi and say, hey, what can we do about this? Well, this is what Oedipus does. He sends his brother-in-law off, uh, uh, Jocasta's brother, Creon, who comes back now as the play opens and says the Oracle says, or Apollo says, you have to get rid of the person who murdered the king, Laos. You either have him executed or you exile him. Oedipus says, okay, that's pretty good. That's a good beginning, and that's how the play begins. In a sense, Apollo is the third character in a, in a situation that uh, has the relationship of uh, Oedipus and his mother uh, at the center of it. And so Oedipus is now going to proceed, ironically, to search out the villain who killed his father. He doesn't know it's his father. And, uh, you know, he's going to stumble all, begin to stumble all over the place with doubts and recriminations and then somehow a sense that he's overcome this when he really hasn't. And he's going to get himself into serious trouble. And so he's going to get his wife, mother, in serious trouble along the way. We'll have to see how this works out. But there it is. I, I want you to understand that it's not about a man who killed his father and married his mother. It's about how Oedipus goes and somehow gets himself into a tragic situation trying to solve the question of his own identity. <laughs>